Moses Voldy joining me for a look at sports. That's quite the jump from being a senator to working at a strip club. You know, I don't nice think job. so because you think about it. You work in a dark <laughs> you don't place. Think yet, so. no, no, no. There's similarities. <laughs> I think that in terms of people's minds, people are much more sleazier up in the Senate than they are at the Adult Entertainment Center, if you will. So uh, you know what? It just seems like a perfect fit, in my opinion. Well, I don't know. I guess. Uh, I, have, I just, there's so many I things I want to say. I stumped Esau, ladies and gentlemen. That's the so first. so many things I want to say. I'm just going <laughs> to keep it to myself. All right. But you know what? Let's talk about hockey. Yes. Something I could go on and on and on about for mm -hmm. hours. You can't, you can't stop me there. But uh, Lloydie Minster University, fantastic all season. First round did pretty good. But the thing is, though, they're still kind of hoping for better success in round two, which kind of sounds a little odd, but. Yeah, it seems to be, you know what? The best part about this thing or the funny part about this thing, the heat. They're known for their firepower, but however, that was extinguished in the first round. They did get through, but this time they faced the PAC Saints in game one of their division final, and it would be a long one for the Saints. There you go, a good start is very important. Dane Dow between the pipes for the heat and he'll like this. Chase Stevenson picks Ian Mitchell's pocket and finds Bryce Kindop. They got on the board first. It only took 51 seconds, one zip. The Saints would dominate for the chunk of the period, but Dow was solid between the pipes, rubbing Ryan Peckford, point blank, one of 15 saves for Dow in the opening frame. Heat back on the offensive. Jansen Leslie to TJ Lloyd. He fires from the circle. It's now 2-0 Heat. After Kindop made it 3-0, Zane Franklin by the half wall feeds Logan Ganey, who shovels it to Kindop for the Hattie. Lloyd back to their old form, up four after the opening 20. Now the goal fest would continue in the second Heat power play. Franklin wins the faceoff and finds the back of the net. 5-0 for the home side, looking to pad the stat sheet. How about Kindop, side of the net, corrals the loose puck and scores his fourth goal of the night. How about some more heat power play? Kobe Moore with a bullet, an assassin from the blue line. Poor water bottle had no chance. Now, if I was a betting man, I would be crazy not to take the heat. 9-1 is the final. Now, Loy takes a 1-0 lead in this best of three. And first of all, credit has to go to Dow in the first period, shutting the Saints' momentum early. He finished with 24 saves, or saves, and it doesn't hurt to have some offense come alive, too. With more from the heat contest, here's Matt Schumann. Well, after a shaky start to open the postseason, the Heat were ready for round two. Opening the scoring just 49 seconds into the game, they would light the lamp eight more times as they convincingly take game one by a score of 9-1. to one. I thought we uh, came out ready to play right from the goalie out and uh, we set a tone and we didn't let up, which was nice. And uh, we played a full 60 minutes tonight and uh, hopefully we can follow that up Thursday. The Heat did have to weather an early storm as the Saints came out firing, leading in the shot department 13-3 at one point. But Dane Dow was on top of his game along with Bryce Kindop, who scored four times. Dow, he played really well, you know, he held the fort for us there the first 10 minutes. I thought they were pressuring us and, uh, you know, we made a few big saves and then uh, we took control after that. And that's what you need, a uh, number one goalie uh, to make some saves for you in the uh, playoffs. I was definitely just trying to help out the team offensively and defensively. I guess I just got some lucky bounces and ended up putting the puck in the net a few times. Now the Heat have a chance to wrap this series up Thursday night back in Spruce Grove. We know things are going to be a lot different and we'll expect to see a different team in game two. We went up there a couple times and they played us close both games. So, you know, we're going to we're gonna have our work cut out for us. But you know, we just got to go in there, play a ugly road game and just keep it simple, get pucks deep and just go to work like we did tonight. And I thought we uh, controlled the play and uh, we're puck responsibility tonight. We didn't turn too many pucks over. We got pucks deep and we just went to work and it was, it was nice to watch. Matt Schumont, New Cap Sports. And that's your first look at sports. Gerard Lampau, our man with the weather, has your forecast coming up. Now it may seem they may have limped into volleyball provincials, but don't discount the Lady Rustlers ahead of their match with the top team in the ACAC. Now the Rustlers' goal was to make provincials and in a one match winner take all, the Rustlers are confident heading to Grand Prairie. They may have taken the long road, but the Rustlers are where they want to be. It was a good win for us. Uh, we stepped up to the plate and we, we did what we had to do to make sure that we uh, got our berth to, to Provincials. We trained really hard to play against Lethbridge and our game plan worked and we had no problem beating them. So it was really good to see that all of our hard work paid off and that we're going on to Provincials, which is what we wanted. The green and gold will head to Grand Prairie as the eighth seed. 
and face the Red Deer Queens, a team that they've struggled against this season. But head coach Austin Dyer says playing against the league's top team is the best case scenario. We kind of wanted uh, to have the Red Deer matchup versus the Grant McEwen matchup because uh, just because of the way that we match up against uh, against those teams. We're looking way different than when we did then. Um, as of late, we've been, we've been playing pretty solid. We looked very different and they looked a lot the same. And you know, we've grown so much. We're a young, you know, we have a couple older players, but we also have some rookies on the floor and everybody's grown so much. And even watching myself from then to now, you know, it's just, we've come together. And I think those, you know, those morning practice, those hours putting in and just that dedication has built us to a way better team. And it's that confidence that has this team feeling carefree heading into Friday's match. You know, we're going in eighth, but I definitely don't think we're an eighth place team. And I think it kind of is, um, it's nice going in the underdog. You know, there's no pressure on us. We can go in and we can play. We have evolved into such a stronger team, like defensively and like smarter offensively. Um, so I think that's going to help us a lot. Another key to victory will be their net presence. The wrestlers are one of the taller teams and exploiting the height matchup will be important. Be aggressive with our blocking like we have the past few games. I think that will definitely slow them down and for sure our serving we've been working on. Uh, so a big part for us is to make sure that uh, that we're not giving points away, that uh, we're, we're making other teams earn their points and that we're competing for everyone ourselves. Tonight, Vermilion Arena is the place to be for Game 4 of the Northeastern Junior B quarterfinals. The Lloydminster Bandits have a stranglehold in this series of three games to none over the Tigers. Puck drop is at 8 o'clock. That's all the time we have in sports. We'll have more Newcap news and weather after the break.